Cody. And this is the state of Minnesota. Several high schools in Minnesota are enacting a flexible learning approach, eliminating substitute teachers and rather allowing kids to learn on their own during those periods. It's a big hit too. I, uh, many students have said that the complete lack of motivation or anyone to depend on is really prepping them for college. <laughs> <laughs> the Dakota tribe in South Dakota that sought to open the nation's first marijuana resort says it burned its crop after federal officials signaled a potential raid. In the latest news, South Dakota's a pretty cool place to live in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twister, a game created by a St. Paul native, was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame this week. This Whoa. follows it being honored into the National Awkward Erection Hall of Fame last week, <laughs> alongside fellow nominee, the first time Timmy realized he had a crush on the babysitter. <laughs> More like Aaron. Uh, Mumford and Sons announced a show next in St. Paul next April as part of the Arrow Through the Heartland tour. And I'm excited. But you know what? I'm way more excited about their opener, a folk band that'll be just as annoying and twice as famous in a year. <laughs> Five men were arrested last week in connection to a September robbery of a Taco John's in Fargo. I don't know what's crazier, that it took five people to rob a Taco John's or that five people wanted to rob a Taco John's. <laughs> the, the strangest part is that there's a Taco John's in Fargo, North Dakota. Oh yeah, it's the best Tex-Mex north of South Dakota. <laughs> uh, according to the 2014 census, 17% of Minnesotans don't have the internet which is heartbreaking because that means almost a fifth of Minnesota still has to go to the library to watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> Over 68,000 deer were shot by Minnesota hunters last weekend, the first of the hunting season. Another interesting stat, the phrase, son, you're a man now, was said over 68,000 times this weekend as well. Wait, so all I had to do was kill a deer to have my dad love me? That's how fatherhood works in most states, yes. <laughs> okay, figure that out. Uh, a Hennepin County judge dismissed the charges or, uh, against the 11 organizers of the Mall of America Black Lives Matter protest. Ooh. When reached for comment, the judge said, we can, we can agree that 11 lives matter. Let let's move on. <laughs> a Metro Transit police officer was fired last Wednesday after attacking and injuring a teenager during a Black Lives Matter rally in St. Paul. When reached for comment, the same judge from Aaron's joke said, okay, 12. We can do 12, but <laughs> seriously, that's it. <laughs> Uh, Mall, the Mall of America announced that it is stepping up security following the terrorist attacks in Paris. Really, Mall of America? In what world are you the next target? <laughs> Paris is the city of lights. The mall doesn't even have a Camp Snoopy anymore. Yeah, after that went away, it's off their radar yeah. for sure. <laughs> a fisherman in Malak, Minnesota caught what may hold the world record for largest muskie. Representatives from the Guinness Book of World Records could not confirm at the time, though, because they were all on assignment officiating the world's largest game of freeze tag in Kentucky. <laughs> It's gonna be a really hard one to break. I know, it was a good first, it was a good first game of freeze tag. Dan Kimmel, a Democratic candidate for the Minnesota House, ended his campaign Sunday hours after he tweeted, ISIS isn't necessarily evil. It's made up of people doing what they think is best for their community. Violence is not the answer, though. And yeah, that's a shitty tweet. It's miles ahead of his first draft, though. Uh, got extremely drunk last night. Really pulled an ISIS there. Hashtag Kimmel2016. Two, re <laughs> okay. um, two Republican U.S. Senators have proposed lifting a federal ban on hunting gray wolves in the Great Lakes region, including Minnesota. While this endangers wolves, it does, it, it does make those cool wolf t-shirts a way cooler. <laughs> Uh, Lieutenant Governor Tina Smith announced last Friday that entrance to all Minnesota state parks will be free on Black Friday as a way to encourage families to spend time together. In unrelated news, Target has announced its new Itasca State Park location. No word on when that will open. <laughs> all right. And this has been the state of Minnesota. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Woo! Yeah. 
Thank you. Hello, my name is Jonathan Gershberg, and this is MN10, a segment that highlights the problems that Minnesotans don't talk about, namely anything other than the weather. Tonight, we talk about prison, the funnest place to be on TV. There, you can join a colorful cast of characters who regularly break out, sneak in, smuggle contraband, and befriend Morgan Freeman. But much like my apartment, <laughs> Prison is actually a terrible place where grown men cry. This is true even in Minnesota, where we regularly make terrible things seem tolerable, like walleye, the Vikings, and most importantly, Garrison Keillor. <laughs> Thank God he does radio. That face should go nowhere near your camera. But it's hard for even our best Minnesotan bullshitting to cover up the fact that we have a prison problem. For starters, nearly 10,000 people are imprisoned in Minnesota, meaning the land of 10,000 lakes is really the land of 10,000 mistakes. 10,001 if you include Michelle Bachman. <laughs> now, some people think that having more people locked up in human kennels protects the rest of us from crime. Now, unfortunately, prison, like a communications degree, just doesn't work as well as you might think. <laughs> Many imagine the average prisoner to have bulging muscles, a teardrop tattoo, and a super cool nickname like Thrasher, Rock Solid, or PTSD David. <laughs> but in reality, many prisoners are nonviolent drug offenders who ended up there because of drug addiction or lack of employment opportunities. Nearly 20% of all the people in our state prisons are there due to drug-related offenses. Now, prisons more often than not actually turn people into repeat offenders. In Minnesota, 61% of all people released from prison end up back there because it's essentially the socioeconomic version of herpes. You have it once, and you're scarred for life. And the worst part is everyone wants to know how it happened. <laughs> Those released from prison find themselves discriminated against when looking for jobs, housing, and even in the voters' booth. That last one is where things get even more strange, given the fact that Minnesotans love to vote. We have one of the highest voter turnouts of any state in the country, which is awesome. It means that those elected into office better represent the will of the people. And apparently the will of the people is, has been in the past, former governor and current shellless turtle, Tim Pawlenty. <laughs> And former governor Jesse Ventura, who once said, and this is absolutely true in an interview, quote, if I can be reincarnated as a fabric, I will come back as a 38 double D bra. <laughs> Thanks, Minnesota, for showing that even the best voting turnout can still bring the worst results. <laughs> but strangely, we don't extend the freedom to participate in democracy to those with felony sentences. That's right. In Minnesota, anyone who is in prison or on parole or probation for a felony conviction is barred from voting in all elections. That leaves nearly 47,000 people in Minnesota, many of whom were convicted on drug-related crimes without the right to vote. For context, that's as many people as live in the entire town of Edina, which is ironic because Edina does way more drugs. <laughs> Imprisoning people who are struggling with addiction makes no sense. Imagine if we locked up everyone who smoked cigarettes and took away their right to vote for 10 years. We would basically disenfranchise every teen lashing out against their parents for their divorce. And basically the entire populations of Trevors in, the, in Minnesota. <laughs> now, I know that might seem harsh, but if you can present me with one Trevor who does not smoke a, a pack of Pall Malls a day, then I will rescind that joke. But currently, I have no evidence to the contrary. <laughs> but even if they won't shut up about their band, statistically speaking, <laughs> there aren't that many Trevors in prison to begin with because white people are grossly underrepresented in, in our prison system. 83% of Minnesotans are white, while they only make up less than half of the incarcerated population. Overall, 53% of the people in prison are people of color, while they make up only 17% of the state population. Now, here's how we can think about this better. Pretend the state is a giant Oreo cookie. 80% of us are the white center, and 17% of us, ironically, are the chocolate crackers. Now, think of the state prisons as, as Gail from work. 
Most people like to take regular bites out of their Oreos, leaving everything proportional as it should be. But Gail, the human-shaped pile of cable knit sweaters, only likes to eat chocolate crackers, which is disgusting, mainly because the crackers have been oppressed and uh, discriminated against for centuries, and Gail shouldn't be so goddamn picky. And by picky, I mean discriminatory. Come on, Gail, I'm not asking you to solve the prison industrial complex. I'm asking you to eat the cream in the cookie. That's not what I meant. I'm so sorry. Please do not go to HR. I apologize. I'll leave. This isn't just a big problem for Minnesotans that end up in prison or jail. It's also a problem for those of us who are law-abiding or, in layman's terms, boring. The state spends 100 taxpayer dollars per day for each inmate kept in jail. $100 a day. I'm an upstanding citizen, and I don't even spend $100 a day. What are we buying these guys? I mean, caviar? A CrossFit membership? Fundamental health care? And some of you <laughs> might think that that's OK. $100 a day for guaranteed safety for the rest of us seems reasonable. But keep in mind, that is one day, a one-day cost for a single inmate. When all the math is said and done, the state of Minnesota spends $435 million on expenditures uh, to keep prisons open every year. $435 million. Do you know what we could do with $435 million? We could pay the average college tuition for 16,000 students. We could buy six million ALF costumes. <laughs> can you imagine that? The entire state of Minnesota can look like ALF. ALF not your thing? Well, maybe we can buy 43,000 jet skis. Even better, let's compromise. How about two, two, million, two million ALFs riding 29,000 jet skis? <laughs> I can't think of a better way to prevent crime. Hey, you want to rob this bank? No, man. I want to ride this wake while impersonating an alien from the 80s. Later, bra. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Now, Minnesota is not the only state that spends its ALF jet ski money on incarceration. <laughs> but Minnesota is relatively better off than most states. Currently, we have the fourth lowest prison population of any state in the country. But before we start slapping our butts and going out for self-congratulatory ice cream, perhaps we should consider that the only reason that the prison population is relatively low is because Less than, more than 100,000 people are currently on parole in Minnesota, making us the state with the fourth highest amount of people on parole or probation. Being on probation or parole seems like it's better than prison because you can still do the things that people in the real world love doing, like paying rent and taking shits behind closed doors. But in fact, <laughs> it could ju be just as disruptive to people's lives. Another 2,000 of the people locked up in our state are there for minor infractions on parole. People who forgot to check in with their parole officer, failed a drug test, or didn't appear at a court date. What if every time you went to work late, instead of getting a side eye from Jeff in sales, you got a jail sentence? And honestly, having to work in sales is already like being in prison. They're completely unwilling to compromise creatively, and their deadlines are ridiculous. But that's not the point. All in all, Minnesota spends a lot of money to disproportionately imprison people of color and those struggling with unemployment and addiction. Many places around the country have recognized that they have serious problems and have addressed it by drastically reducing the amount of people they hold in prison. New York, California, and New Jersey all decreased its prison population by nearly a quarter between 2000 and 2013. But Minnesota is going the other direction. Minnesota's prison population has more than tripled in the last 35 years. In the last 15 years alone, it has increased 42%. And if current trends continue, we will have 1,000 more prisoners 10 years from now. We are imprisoning so many people that we, our jails and prisons actually can't catch up. Right now, Minnesota has 550 more people than can fit into our prisons. And it's paying county jails to temporarily hold them. 550 people. Well, to give you context, that's the equivalent of two circuses, uh, 10 school buses, or 550 unicycles. <laughs> and if you're thinking, wow, that's a shit ton of unicycles, yeah, that's the, exactly the point. And unicycles don't have families, because they were all kicked out because they smoke. Anyway, 
Instead of just lowering the amount of people in jail, Minnesota Correction, Corrections Commissioner Tom Roy has proposed spending $141 million to expand an existing prison in Rush City, Minnesota. $141 million state dollars is a lot of money. Instead of using it to expand the system that is frequently useless, racist, and expensive, we could use that money to be doing so much more good. We could buy textbooks for our school systems, expand health care access for low-income families, and most importantly, we could buy thousands of ALF costumes and jet skis, because that is what the revolution looks like. <laughs> now, if you have a better idea what we could do with that money, tweet the Minnesota Department of Corrections at Min Corrections with your idea what we can use that $141 million for, and include the hashtag ALF jet ski. You know it'll work. Thank you. Stay nice, Minnesota. Good night. Minnesota tonight. Welcome to Minterview, where we interview people making a difference in Minnesota, a pun that no one has used ever before. Today, we are with the Director of Public Policy and Advocacy for the Council on Crime and Justice, and the co-chair of the Minnesota Second Chance Coalition, Josh Esme. Let's give him a round of applause. Happy New Year. So, Josh, you work for the Council on Crime and Justice, correct? That's right. Uh, and so, to start, which do you prefer more, crime or justice? Uh, <laughs> let me say that again. Which do you prefer more, more crime or justice? And because, uh, like, like every parent, you do have a favorite, even though you don't say. I know. Um, because, like, if both of the siblings were hanging off a cliff, you would obviously try to like save one more than the other. Is it crime or justice? The people want to know. So <laughs> we've actually, at CCJ, we've been uh, uh, described as being lobbyists for criminals before, but uh, we actually don't love crime. Uh, we love people, uh, and we don't stop loving people just because they've committed a crime. Uh, so at CCJ, we strive to create a criminal justice system that is equitable, treats people with compassion and dignity, and allows for second chances. And sort of the rub on that is, you know, you talked about comparing justice or crime. It's kind of like talking about, you know, do we make decisions for public safety or do we make decisions based on individual liberty and treating people, uh, um, uh, you know, treating people fairly. Um, and what we think is by striving for these ideals, you know, allowing for second chances, you're actually creating a more safe, more, um, more fair society. Yeah. So when someone gets a second chance or someone is released from prison, like what happens? So say someone from the Twin Cities is released in St. Cloud, I mean, do, do they get a ride home? Do they get a goodie bag? Like, what, what's the situation for someone who's released from prison? Yeah, well, they don't get a goodie bag. Oh. Um, depending on where they're going, they might get a ride, but they might not even get a ride. Wow. So, like, what, what are the repercussions of, of, like, having a prison sentence after you get out? Yeah, well, what you face when you get out is actually the same thing that you face uh, even if you didn't spend time in prison, and that is what we call the collateral consequences of having a record. And these are the myriad barriers that exist. Sometimes they're legal barriers codified by state statute that work as disabilities, locking you out of benefits or employment opportunities. Sometimes they're just the, the natural result of the stigma that having a record that I you know, could pull up on my cell phone right now, uh, or you know, whenever you Google someone's name, uh, creates. And, and they lock people out of uh, employment. They keep people from finding housing. They prevent people from participating in their communities, from voting. And, uh, really, the litany of collateral consequences goes on and on and on. Um, and in fact, one of the one of them is that you become yourself more likely to be a victim of crime simply uh, by having a, a criminal record. Huh. So that's what you face. Wow, I don't want to face that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's no. I just that's as much as I can say about that. I just don't want that. So you, the uh, C Council on Crime and Justice and the Minnesota Second Chance Coalition work together to. Um, to advance a bill that Governor Dayton just signed the, uh, for expungement. Um, I don't know what expungement means. When I hear that word, I think of like a service that's offered in the back pages of city pages or a type of cake that a German grandmother would make. So I don't know what expungement is. 
It does sound delicious. It does sound <laughs> Can you please help me? What, what is expungement? If you could just explain what that is. Sure. Uh, so an expungement, and actually this is uh, you know, something I, I, I looked up in my, my law dictionary when I was at law school. To expunge something means to erase or destroy it. Uh, although that's a little bit of a misnomer. In Minnesota, when we're talking about an expungement, what we're really talking about is going to court um, and uh, asking the court for a court order to seal that record uh, so that it isn't accessible on Google and on the court's website and doesn't show up every time you apply for a, you know, a, a job at Super America or an apartment. Um, it, it's not a destruction of a record. In fact, the record can be reopened and would be reopened, for example, if someone was ever accused of committing another crime can also be accessed for specific, uh, sort of uh, particularly sensitive types of employment. Uh, but really what expungement is, is it's an opportunity to give someone a second chance so that they, you know, they have a fair shot at getting employment and housing and all of the things that you need to be a productive uh, member of our community. Right, That's, so I mean, what would like the average Minnesotan who's watching this show and confused how they got here on the internet and asking themselves, When's Garrison Keillor gonna come on? Like that person, what can that person do to uh, you know, work on these problems, these disparities, or uh, advocate for uh, change to the criminal justice system that doesn't help people or, uh, or uh, is uh, brought down unfairly among many Minnesotans? Yeah, well, you, you know, sort of the good thing about the criminal justice system is it's, it's local, it's Minnesota politics. Um, and so if you want to get involved, you know, you don't have to do any, you don't have to call someone in Washington, D.C. All you got to do is uh, talk to your state, re your state representatives, your state lawmakers. Um, you know, voting is a, a big part of it. Um, but also just, uh, you know, helping raise their awareness that, uh, that these policies are, are unfair and need to be changed. Um, I got, uh, you can get involved with a few different organizations. I am the, the co-chair of the Second Chance Coalition, so you can go to uh, mnsecondchancecoalition.org, uh, sign up for our email list there. Um, we'll keep you, uh, keep you involved in what's happening at the legislature, invite you out for our annual rally. Uh, you can also go to the Council on Crime and Justice's website, uh, website uh, www.crimeandjustice.org. Um, and then the last thing, Oh, uh, if you're interested in the voting, there's also a, a, a really impressive coalition, bipartisan coalition, uh, with a, a huge diverse group of stakeholders, including law enforcement folks, uh, uh, and conservative think tanks, and liberals, and everyone's coming together around that. Um, and you can find more about that at uh, uh, RestoreTheVoteMinnesota.org. So you can check out all those websites. And then the last thing is, um, changing these policies on a macro level is going to go, is a big part of this, but it's also on an individual level too. So. If you yourself uh, have a record or you know someone who has a record, uh, at the Council on Crime and Justice, we do free legal clinics where people can come find out more information about their record, talk to an attorney about getting an expungement. Uh, you can find information about that on, on Council on Crime and Justice's website. And also, a new website that we've created uh, called the Aftermath Project. So it's criminalrecordsaftermath.com. Uh, um, and there's uh, information there for all of these sort of collateral consequences that people may be facing. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I, that's a better use of the name than my uh, middle school grunge band, also called the Aftermath Project. Um, it did, yeah, it, it did much less good than your, than your <laughs> use of it. Um, so uh, if, I, if I miss the Second Chance Coalition rally, is there another rally that I can get to later? Oh, well, like there is a second chance. A rally second chance for rally for the second for people who missed. We're, work, the first. we're working on the second chance. Oh, okay, the second. The chance, second, second, second chance. Second chance. Second chance. Rally. Second chance. <laughs> no, there'll be a second. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Russian doll situation <laughs> yeah. of rallies to make sure that people are getting out the vote to help to help uh, uh, those incarcerated and dealing with criminal justice. Yeah. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. Joshua Esme from the Council on Crime and Justice. Thank you very much. That's the main interview. Interview. Hey, Minnesota, please welcome Minneapolis rapper Chaos. What's going on, everybody? Okay. <laughs> Cue music. 
Yeah. So before 2010, I was just a rapper. But after 2010, I became an openly gay rapper. And so um, I wrote this song about the music industry and about all those MCs that try to act like they're something that they're not. You know what I mean? So here it goes. Check it. Hi kids, my name is Tyler Durton. Love the sexy ladies, but boys get the hurting. I'm so focused, you need to stop flirting. Lyrical coercion, I'm kinda short in person. These fake ass rappers got deals and don't deserve them. Stand in line and serve them like sushi and sea urchin. They're living double lives on the microphone. Telling lies about the girls that they really like to bone. A silly psycho homes, better get your Vicodone. Cause I'm about to beat this in your dome till the lights come on. That's not suggestive, maybe a bit aggressive. Time to learn your lesson. Lesson, then you get tested. I never wear my orientation on my sleeve, but I always stand tall next to what I believe. What does that make me? The question is rhetorical. So many loud mouths, many flowing horrible. All this talk about, is he in, is he out? The only thing that matters is I have a friggin' mouth. Devoid of gold fronts, I have no southern draw. I had my share of cuts, but I was made to dribble balls. Criticism cuts deeper when you talk your own flaws. Same time ignoring the pain that it caused. This ain't love and war. What the hell we fighting for? Cats don't need the beef unless the dog's biting yours. I come in, yo, I go in. Hey, I go in. Yeah, I go in. I don't come out, I go in. And I usually have to take it back for the straight people because they don't get it, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, my name is Tyler Dirt. Love a sexy lady, but boys get the hurting. I'm so focused, you need to stop flirting. Lyrical coercion, I'm kind of short in person. These fake ass rappers got deals and don't deserve them. Stand in line and serve them like sushi and sea urchin. They live in double lives on the microphone. Telling lies about the girls that they really like to bone. A silly cycle, homes better get your Vicodone. Cause I'm about to beat this in your dome till the lights come on. That's not suggestive, maybe a bit aggressive. Time to learn your lesson, then you get tested. I never wear my orientation on my sleeve but I always stand tall next to what I believe but does that make me that question is rhetorical so many loud mouths many flowing horrible all this talk about is he in is he out the only thing that matters is I have a friggin mouth devoid of gold fronts have no southern draw have my share of cunts made to dribble balls criticism touch deeper when you talk your own flaws same time ignoring the pain that it caused this ain't love and war what the hell we fighting for cats don't need to beef unless the dog's biting yours. I come in, yo, I go in. Hey, I go in. Uh-huh, I go in. I don't come out, I go in. Thank you. So, huh, this song is called Pills. One pill makes you larger, one pill makes you small. And the ones that mother gives you, they don't do anything, anything at all. Yo. At the end of the day, my heart hurts, it's the curse of being gay. You can't believe the word that they say. And they only can relate to you in one or three ways. Touching my right for the stage. You the lead man, see stand, be brave. Bathroom cabinet is my area to pray. I'm so hip to the game. Pop me in the leg and I'll limp through the pain. Faint screams, mistakes can make dreams. Take things either way to the extremes. Comprehending me, training, avenge identity. Sick and sin, the trauma sticks to your memory.